Hello, hi friends, this is Patty Bennett. Welcome back. I am so glad you're here today. Are you ready for some fun coloring tips? I'm going to be using Stampin' Blends markers and this background stamp to create this card with you while I share some coloring tips as well as a couple of card making tips. This is a weekly live video. Today is June 23rd, 11 a.m. Pacific time, if you're catching me live. But chances are you're probably watching a replay, which is totally awesome, too. Hey, I see Donna and Diane. Welcome. Please be sure to say hello as you find the live so that I can give you a little shout out. Hi, Patricia. Hi, John. Hello, everybody. So glad that you are here. Hi, Nancy. Hey, from Canada. Welcome. That's awesome. So we are just going to give everybody about 60 seconds to find the live feed and join in. So if you're watching a replay, you won't miss anything if you want to jump ahead for a minute or so. Feel free to do that. Greetings, Christine in Australia. It's 4 a.m. Oh, my goodness. That is pretty early. Hi, Mary. Hi, Nancy. Welcome, everybody. So glad that you are here. Hey, I see Stacy in South Florida. Hello. Hi, Anne. Happy Friday. <laughs> so happy that you are all here. So again, if you're just finding the live, please go ahead and say hello so that I know that you're here. You're welcome to give me a thumbs up or a heart and I'll see it fly by and I'll know that you are here. This is Patty Bennett. Put my little card out here. I blog at pattystamps.com. And if you are looking for the photos from today's project, you can come back to pattystamps.com tomorrow, which would be June 24th. And you can see all the photos so that you can pin them to Pinterest or you can um, take a you know screenshot or print something out. However you like to save things is great. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you may have found the replay there already on my blog or on my YouTube channel. That's great as well. Oh, thanks, Eth Esther. She said, happy 28th anniversary. Yes, yesterday was my 28th anniversary as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Can you even believe that? That just seems like, well, it is a lifetime for some people, right? <laughs> it's a long time. I just love what I do, so I am blessed that this is my full-time gig. <laughs> Hi, Cindy in Wisconsin. Hey, Pam from Yuma. Let's see, who else is here? Who jumped in? Hey, Christine, Robin, Stacy. Who else came in here? Sheila, Debbie. Okay, no problem. Debbie says she has to run. She'll watch the replay. No problem. Hi, Joyce. Hello, everybody. Okay, I think we've caught everybody that's going to jump in live. So we're going to go and ahead and get started today. So I created this card to share with you, and it features the background stamp called, Har well, I can get that word out, can't I? Berry Harvest. And it is a background stamp, which means it is a large stamp and it goes on the large F size clear block. So it will cover the whole background of a card front, which you can see we've done here. But I've also stamped it again in Memento ink so that I can color it with Stampin' Blends. And I love that this particular stamp can kind of do double duty for that. I think this background stamp can also do double duty where you could use it as a background or you can cut out various parts of that stamp to use as a focal point. But then background stamps, sorry, I'm trying to get rid of that glare. Background stamps like these, you would just use as a background. You probably would not so much cut those out to use in detail. If you're looking for all of the background stamps, you're going to find them in the Stampin' Up! catalog, page 118 down here and page 119. There are three more of them. There are ideas on these pages about how to use them. And I'll show you that right here is where I got this idea to actually cut out part of this berry harvest 
um, background stamp into smaller pieces. So that's where I got the idea. I also loved this. This is Moody Mauve, and I've shown you this before, but I tried that out with the Moody Mauve ink on Moody Mauve cardstock, and I think this also makes a gorgeous background. And then I tried it with Berry Burst on Berry Burst, and I think that is gorgeous as well. Lots of possibilities, I feel like, with this Berry Harvest stamp. So that's where you'll find it, and if you need a catalog or a demonstrator or these supplies you can find them all at pattystamps.com so first I'm going to show you the background which is very straightforward and easy and hang on oh sorry <coughs> excuse me I could feel that sneeze coming on oh my goodness <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Woo. Those are, those are one of those sneezes that just kind of set you back for half a second. <clears throat> anyway, what was I saying? Oh, the background. So we're going to do the background just in Berry Burst on white, and then I will show you the coloring. So let's just do the background first. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my goodness. Now I feel like I'm going to like sniff. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. I hate that. It's so annoying. So when I ink one of these large background stamps, my preference is having the stamp on the clear, the big F block, the clear block, and then I hold my ink pad like this, and I just tap all over so that I can see that it's getting nice and evenly inked. And this is Berry Burst ink, by the way. Hang on one sec. Sorry, that sneeze made my nose run. <laughs> and then I've got my quarter sheet of cardstock here, and I know that I'm going to be trimming it down. So I'm not like a hundred percent worried about getting, making sure that this was centered or that it was to the edge. I'm just going to trim it so just getting it stamped is is good enough see this is what I mean it missed that little edge but that's okay because I'm trimming it down to a smaller size okay I'm just going to clean this because I do not want to accidentally put my arm or anything in that okay so that's going to be our background now I want to show you a tip for trimming down your cardstock. So do you see how I have the Berry Burst card base? Then I have a, a skinny little black layer, and then I have my Berry Burst background. I want to show you a tip. I know that measurements and trimming and rulers and all those things are not always everyone's best friend. Am I right? Some people just will do anything not to have to worry about a ruler or eighths of an inch or sixteenths of an inch or whatever, right? So I don't know why I never thought of this before, but I'm going to show you a tip for trimming this down. And I, maybe all of you all have already figured this out and it's just me who just thought of this, but I think you're going to love it. So what I'm talking about is Normally, on cards, we trim off a quarter inch and a quarter inch, and then maybe we'll do an eighth of an inch. But quarter inch is just seems really easy measurements, like four and a quarter, five and a half, four, five and a quarter, uh, three and three quarters by five, right? It's easy to think about half inch increments. But when you want a skinny layer, like I just wanted this little background of black, then you get into the eighths of an inch. And I think that's where people start to kind of panic. So let me show you a tip. If you go ahead and just start with quarter sheets, so four and a quarter by five and a half. These are my, my two layers. You see they line up, at, but I want them a different size, right? I want this, I want that tiny little black border. Here's my tip. On 
your outside piece, which for me is this black one, and I want it a quarter inch smaller than my card, instead of worrying about the actual measurement, slide your cardstock over to this first solid line, which is a quarter inch. Okay, take a quarter inch off, take a quarter inch off. Now this works when you have started with a quarter of a sheet, which is very easy to cut, right? So now I have a quarter inch taken off. But now for my white layer, instead of worrying about, okay, wait, I took off a quarter, so now what, what do I cut it at? All you're gonna do is slide it over to the quarter but then go one eighth, so right there. So I'm gonna to go to a quarter, and then I'm just gonna to go to an eighth. So again, I'm gonna slide it over to the quarter, but then up here, I'm just gonna go one eighth. Just, just easing it right, right there, okay? So what I've done is take off three eighths, but I didn't worry about what is that actual measurement because like I said that can be really stressful and now you can see that we have just this beautiful I'm not going to say perfect because nothing's perfect but fairly accurate there I'll put it down fairly accurate very skinny border without worrying about eighths and sixteenths and like three and three eighths and you know what I mean? Isn't that easier? Does it does anybody already do this? Okay, Kay says she didn't know this. All right, so awesome. I've at least helped one person today. Yay. <laughs> so then if you have your card base, which is just the five and a half by eight and a half, hopefully if I did this right right? Then we have our quarter inch and we have our very small black border. So I just, I don't know why it took me until recently to just sort of figure that out, but I thought it might be helpful. So here we're going to do that same thing and we're going to trim this one down so it fits on our black piece. So again, we're going to go to a quarter. We're going to scoot it over to an eighth. We're going to go to a quarter, and we're going to scoot it over an eighth. Wait, let me make sure. Quarter, eighth. Yep, right there. Quarter, eighth. And now this should fit nicely on this black one. Right? Yep. Okay, see? So there we go. Again, not going to say perfect, but it's. I think that's going to be just awesome. We'll call it awesome instead of perfect. How's that? <laughs> Does that work for everybody? <laughs> okay, but before we layer them together, I want to show you what I did. Do you see how this has this nice little glow of berry burst around the edge? As I was typing my blog post for this, I had to laugh because it reminded me of the days when... We would take our, do you remember the round yellow sponges, and we would cut them in quarters, and we would flick it on the edge, and then sometimes we would use sponge daubers, right? And it seems like for, I don't know, how long did we always um, do, like, I did that on every layer of everything that I ever made. So... What I decided to do, since I was working on something else and I had my blending brushes out, is I just decided, well, what would it look like if I did this? And I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. And to me, it actually came out better than trying to use something to flick on the edge. And I just thought it was beautiful. And it gave such a pretty glow. And you'll notice when I get my ink, I'm always kind of dabbing off. See how you can get these blobs? You don't really ever want that on your project, do you? I don't. So there we go. Now I just have this beautiful, soft glow for my card edge. Please hold. Hold. 
Sorry, I'm telling you, that was quite the sneeze, and it's just making my nose run. So there we have, maybe if I flip this open to a clean spot, you can see it better. But isn't that pretty? I think that's a really pretty layer. Yeah, Christine, you're right. It gives it a softer look. Thanks, Tammy. Um, did you stamp the berries? Oh, Diana, maybe you weren't here in the beginning. This is the Berry Harvest background stamp. And so I stamped it in uh, Berry Burst on white cardstock. And then we're going to do the coloring of the um, of these images. And I'll show you how I did that. Let's see. I like the way it blends from the white layer to the berry burst. Yes, Robin, I think so. I think it's pretty, right? I use a stamp and blend marker around the edges. Yes, you can do that as well, Wendy. That works absolutely as well. Hi, Jason. Welcome. Let's see. Who else? Yeah, Stacy still has the yellow sponges and she loves them. Um, Becky still uses them too. Oh, I love it. I love it. All righty. Okay, let's see. Um... Oh, good. Anne says she's going to start trimming this way. And Susan says, and Susan and Colleen says it's a great tip. Tammy says brilliant. Oh, good. I am so glad you all loved that cutting tip. I just think that's so much easier than worrying about small increments of measurements. And then you don't even have to really worry about it either. You just, you just know that on one of them, you took off a quarter. So on the next one, you just bump it an eighth. Well, anyway, in my mind, so much easier. All right, so we are ready to glue. Wow, did you see that? It just, hang on. <laughs> just glued it right all over to the edge. No problem. That's why I keep a old icky rag at my station. All right, and then I'm just going to layer this onto the black. And I think that just sets that off so nicely because you can see here on our finished card that our image that we're going to stamp is black outline. I've got the black greeting and I've got the black ribbon. So it all just kind of ties together. Now the other little layer I have on here, this is, um, hang on, let me grab my sampler so I make sure I say this correctly. This is the Soft Shimmer Specialty Paper, and it has five different colors. So you have Bubble Bath, Berry Burst, Lost Lagoon, what is, is this navy? Yeah, Night of Navy, and Pretty Peacock. It's white on the other side, and it's it's pretty, well, I'm not going to say it's thick, but it's it's a nice weight. It's not flimsy, let's say that. And I love, I've been using this so much for little accents. I love this paper. And this particular design is kind of a nice way to just use up a scrap. So I'm just going to put a strip across here. But I think that kind of hides a little too much. So I'm going to trim this down. So, oh, now I have to either, hang on, I'm not going to worry about the measurement. So I'm going to cut it to five and a half. I'm not even going to worry, right? I'm going to put it to an eighth, I mean a quarter and then an eighth. And then that should match that berry stamped layer. Does it? Ta-da! But I'm going to trim it down this way. It's a little, a little bit wide for me. So let's, let's maybe make it an inch and a half. But save these. You could punch cute little hearts or something out of those. Don't throw away this beautiful specialty paper. So I'll add that. About, about there. There's no magical spot for this. Then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tie the black gingham ribbon around this layer instead of around the whole card. I wasn't sure, and I'm going to do a bow, I wasn't sure if I was going to use it on this card, which is why it was a little bit of an afterthought, and that's why it's wrapped around the entire card. But I think on this one, we'll change it just a tiny bit and do it just on these uh, top layers. Okay, cute little bow. 
And I know I still have my wonderful ribbon scissors. I love these. If there was one thing I wish Stampin' Up! would resurrect and carry, it would be ribbon scissors. I just love them. And then here's a little tip. I don't know if you all do this, but I like to get a little glue dot on my pokey tool and just slip it in there under the knot. And then it won't wiggle, it won't move around. And I think it just helps it to stay nice and nice and nice, right? Helps it stay nice. Then we can go ahead and layer this on. Yes, Daisy, those scissors are so awesome, aren't they? Alrighty. So I think that looks amazing. Now, if you're not a fan of coloring and you don't want to do this next step and add all this, you could just so easily just add a greeting and you could, that card could be done, right? You could just say, that's it, I'm done. And nobody would even know that it might be different than adding the extra colored um, elements. So think about that if you're thinking, mm, I don't know, Patty loves to color, but I don't, then don't worry about the coloring part. Just leave it, right? Um, how, how did, Jason, I'm not sure what you mean. Did you mean that you missed that specialty paper? Maybe that's what you meant. Let's see. Was there another question? Sorry, I'm just reading the live questions. Um, Patty loves the shimmer paper. Problem is you only get one of each. Well, yeah, so my solution to that is you buy two packs. Because <laughs> I've been using a lot of it. I think I'm on my third pack. <laughs> uh, let's see, any other? Oh, so, yeah, Jason, I can show you the specialty paper. So it's right here, number seven. Number seven, soft shimmer. So it's it's these five pieces on top of those two gold pieces. Those are those are separate. So it's these five. It's this page, I don't know, is it me or is it a little overwhelming and confusing? It's page 127. But uh they're beautiful. They're really beautiful. And they're it's similar to this pack. This is a textured paper, and then it's similar to this pack, which is the or this is also textured, but this one is a white core and it's textured. I don't know. These three packs to me are very, very similar, but you know, they're, they all kind of have their own fun to them, right? Yes. Tanya, coloring is my therapy. I will say that. Hi, Jamie. Welcome. Um, let's see. Oh, good. Polly says she might be thinking about some of the background stamps. All right, so now let's do the coloring. I'll give you my tips on that, and then we can finish up the card. Oh, and you know what? I started to do this before the live, and I, I forgot to finish it. So you know me. What I love to do when I am thinking about a project is I grab the colors I think I'm going to use, and this is what I call swatching. Oh, that's very burst. And I do this because I just like to make sure that what I'm thinking in my brain is actually going to look good together. Because sometimes I'll do this and I'll think, uh oh, no, 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 don't, don't use that color. That, that's not going to work. And then I just don't use it. Sometimes I'll put an X. <laughs> so for my berries, I've used Bubble Bath Melon Mambo Berry Burst. And for my greens, I use Lemon Lime, Twist, and Granny Apple. And I keep these little cards. You've seen me show those pretty often, right? I keep them in a drawer right here next to me. And then when I need inspiration or if I want to check and see if certain things go together, then I grab those little swatch cards and I make sure that I like those colors for my project. 
So those are my colors. Bubble Bath, Melon Mambo, Berry Burst, Lemon Lime, and Granny Apple. And some of you may be saying, but couldn't you just use one color on the berries and one color on the leaves? Yes, of course you can. Of course you can. But you can see by using multiple colors that you get lots of depth and you get some like highlights and your eye kind of is moving around looking at all the details and it looks a little more 3D-ish or lifelike than just one color. So don't be afraid to mix and match and pull out lots of colors. There's no rule that says you have to just color your berries in berry burst. There, Well, there's no rules anyway. Art is whatever you want it to be, right? <laughs> so that's what I came up with, and I loved these colors together. So we'll start with some berries, and I'm going to show you what I did. So the first thing I did was just loosely and quickly. Do you see how loose and quick and not a ton of thought here? I'm just coloring... And I'm trying to decide which ones I might use on this card, which is why I'm kind of hesitating. But so in the end, I might end up doing them all. <laughs> I don't know. So that's light bubble bath. Very loose. Just add a little color. Now this is the dark bubble bath. And I'm dotting on color. And I'll hold this up to show you. And this is haphazard. There's no right or wrong. There's no rule. This is simply to give two shades of light pink onto the berries. And that's how I started. And you may not even really be able to see that difference, but when you do it yourself, you'll see the difference as you add each layer. So bubble bath done. Now we're going to move to Melon Mambo. And dots. Melon Mambo dots. You can use... The fine tip here, if you like, I kind of liked how when you use the brush tip, some dots flatten out a little more, some are smaller. It gave it a little more interest to me to use the brush tip. Okay, now can you see that starting to have some variation of color? Now we'll do it with the dark Melon Mambo. And as I'm doing the Dark Melon Mambo, I'm concentrating a little bit more around the edge where it probably would be a little bit darker in real life. Not a rule, just, just sort of my interpretation here. And again, this is just my interpretation of this. This is not a rule. This is not anything you have to do but it's how I achieved the multiple colors. And then finally, the Berry Burst. And this is Light Berry Burst. And to me, this is the color that absolutely brought these to life. I think it is the perfect color for kind of this raspberry, boysenberry-ish look. And the only thing I'm concentrating on here is making sure that I do not cover up every single light bubble bath area because the magic of this is allowing yourself lights and darks and that contrast. That is what makes these anything that you color look a little more realistic is the contrast between light and dark. Okay, so there's the berries. And just for contrast, like what if we just colored these in one color and you can see the difference. You see that difference there? Maybe you say, okay, but add some of the dark. Nothing wrong with doing it that way, but do you see the difference? I think that it's really pretty when you add several colors like that. So that was our first three colors. Now let's do some leaves. Thank you, Colleen. 
<laughs> Mary says, I'm an artiste. You're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Faith, I'm not, I'm not that great with watercoloring, but I love the blends. Oh, thanks, Jamie. She loves the swatches. Yes, I have dozens of those from all my projects. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Just checking the comments. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're agreeing with the fact that that specialty paper page is confusing. And yes, it is. All right. Granny Apple. Granny Apple. And this must be Lemon Lime if I did it correctly. Yep. So Lemon Lime, I'm going to color fairly, fairly loosely. I'm not going all the way to the tips. And I am definitely not uh, painstakingly coloring these in. Just a little bit of loose. This is almost a watercolor look to just have this loose color in here. You want to leave a little bit of white towards the tips and the edges because again, that white is what is going to give your eye something to kind of bounce back and forth around. Now with the dark lemon lime, I am basically following the veins of the leaves that the artist has already drawn. And this is quick and dirty, nothing fancy, no great detail, just getting a little bit of depth in there. Did I get them all? Oh, this one. Okay, so you can see that's just lemon lime, light and dark, just a little bit of contrast there. I'm just going to add wherever one leaf is on top of another or behind a berry, I'm going to add just a little bit more of that dark lemon lime. So I think I got them all. Now we're going to move to Granny Apple Green, which you can see from our swatch is a shade darker. And with light Granny Apple, I'm going to do almost the same thing that I just did. Kind of in the veins. Maybe a couple extra squiggles. A little more color where something is behind another one. So you can see I just darkened that one that I just did. But just keeping it really loose and fluid and not trying to do every single little vein and spot. And then with our dark granny apple, this one's pretty dark. So don't go overboard on the dark granny apple, but it is the perfect way to add that shading in behind anything that was overlapping. And I know you might be thinking, uh-oh, that, that's kind of too dark. You got it too dark, but wait, I'll show you how you compensate there at the end. Okay, so now we have all four colors, and then we go back to our lightest, which is light lemon lime, and we just blend out all the colors together. And as this soaks into the paper, and as it dries, as the alcohol starts to evaporate, this is going to blend And that's it. And that's how you get the lights and the darks and using those four colors, which I think are beautiful together. And I think they go perfectly with the pinks and the, the berry burst purple. Then the last thing I did was the dark granny apple. I took the finer bullet point and I colored in all of those 
stems and I pulled that dark color kind of up into the leaves. So like here, where this stem comes up, then I pulled it up into the leaf a bit to darken that just even a tiny bit more. Don't be afraid to move your paper. It's much better than contorting your wrist to try to get a certain part colored. And I'm sorry, I'm concentrating. I'm not looking at the comments, but I will go back in just a minute. I can see them out of the corner of my eye flashing by. <laughs> but if your hand is more comfortable coloring in a certain direction, just like cutting, just like fussy cutting, which we'll do in a minute, and I'll show you my tips for that. Just like the fussy cutting, you want to make sure that you are always turning your paper and not your wrist. Let's see, what am I missing here? Oh, right here. So, while I'm just finishing up coloring this, let me know, did you learn any tips today? Do you feel like you might want to go color something today? Just curious. Did I get them all? Just kind of glancing through. There's this one right here. There's this one weird spot, and I can't really determine if it's a leaf or not. It's I don't know what that thing is, and so sometimes I color it, sometimes I cut it off. But every time I've colored this, I'm not positive what that is, but it's fine. It will work. So now let me catch up on comments. Yes, the shading makes it pop. Yes, Margaret, this is the background stamp called Berry Harvest. You're welcome to rewatch from the beginning if you want to see all the tips on that. Oh, good. I'm glad you like the swatches. Thank you. I'm glad you like the coloring, everybody. And let's see, was there anything else? Yes, Berry Harvest, page 118. Thank you for everybody that was answering. Oh, yes, Louise, um, definitely. Every time you color a project, make yourself a little swatch. Keep all the little scraps, and then you'll never have to do them a second time. So there you go. What do you think? Do you like it? I think it's so pretty. So, so, so pretty. So now we need to cut a few of them out to use on our project. You can see over here I had a few kind of left over from another project I was already working on, but as I was saying, when you're fussy cutting, you always turn your paper, not your wrist. So do you see that my scissor blades really aren't even moving? It may almost look like they are. It may look like a uh, optical illusion, as my dad used to say, an optical delusion. But you just want to open your scissors way up, start down at the bottom, and just turn your paper and go all the way to your tips. Then you start over. So no like chop, 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 chop. Don't do that. That gives you uh, kind of a rough edge. But by starting at the base of your blade and just keeping your scissors still and turning your paper, you're going to get a much smoother outcome. And I know not everybody loves fussy cutting, but to me, it's just as therapeutic as the coloring. I love to fussy cut. Oh, and I have another tip. Don't let me forget. There's this one other good tip. When we get this layered onto the card, I need to show you this tip. Please, somebody don't, somebody remind me, do not let me forget.
Man, this is a nice big piece. I bet this might be about the only thing we need to add to the card. But I loved using smaller pieces and layering them. And I'll show you what I did with dimensionals. Oh, that's a big one. Look at that. Beauteous. So pretty. So, so, so pretty. But let's let's cut out another one because I'm not sure how many pieces I'm going to use here. So tell me, who has this background stamp? Who has Berry Harvest? You can either comment or just give me a thumbs up or something and let me know. Who has it? When I saw that, it was one of the first things I wanted in the new catalog. I loved it because I just saw this potential of coloring it. And you know me and coloring. Love, love, love to color. I'll glance over and watch the comments in just a second. Um, Tanya just got it. Stacy says she'll be buying it now. You know what I love, too, about these background stamps is they're inexpensive. Let me go back to that page. Background stamps. They are only $18 and $20. And when you think about how many backgrounds you could make with this versus $18 or $20 of pre-printed paper, you could make a lot. So it can be really economical to use your background stamps instead of pre-printed paper. And if you tuned in late, let me just re-show these. This is what I would consider kind of making your own background paper. Berry Burst ink on Berry Burst cardstock. Moody Mauve ink on Moody Mauve cardstock. You could see that you could kind of do a really beautiful background for quite inexpensive or do what we did on here just stamp it on white but I do think that it would give you lots of opportunities for making your own background paper because once you've purchased it you don't ever have to buy it again once you've purchased the stamp And I'm going to show you another tip that I just thought of. You may have noticed that the leaves I just cut around are flat on one side because it was at the edge of the paper, the edge of the stamp, the edge of the paper. So I'm going to show you what I do to be able to make that more usable. Let me just cut inside here too. So to make this a little more usable so that it doesn't look like it's at the edge of the paper, I just sort of round that off. And same here. So let's just kind of make this come more to a point so that it, it almost doesn't even look like it was at the edge of the paper. And then you can always take your black either your blend or just your marker, and you can run it along the edge. And this is what, let me do the thick one. This is what somebody commented earlier about doing this along the edge of your background paper instead of doing a black paper layer. So there, you'd never know that that was at the edge, would you? And now it becomes completely usable. I feel like I'm just all full of tips today. That was another tip. <laughs> Let me catch up on comments really quickly. <clears throat> How do you store your swatches? Um, <laughs> they're in a pile in a drawer. Nothing fancy, Rosie. <laughs> Jean says I make fussy cutting look easy. Oh, well, I'm glad. I, I think the more you do it, the easier it gets. But I love to do it, so... It just kind of flows. Nancy says she'll be getting the stamp. Oh, okay. Becky says, this is interesting. Becky says she thought of this as more of a fall stamp. So now you have me thinking 
of doing it with fall colors. Oh, that could be very beautiful, couldn't it? Let's see, what else? Faith says I'm tipsy. Okay, what happened? What did I do? <laughs> oh, because of the tips. I thought you meant tipsy like drunk. And I was like, why? What did I say? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right, so now I want to show you this last tip. So when I went to layer these on, and I can see that I used this piece right here. So do you see right here where I'm pointing that it's white? And I didn't want to get out an X-Acto knife and cut all this part out. But do you see on here how it blends better? My first thought was, take my stamp and blend of that of this berry burst color and color it in. And I tried it on a scrap. I'll show you. but it it's it's really kind of dark. It's really kind of overwhelming. So what I did was I used oh. I just dropped my post-it note. I took a post-it note and I covered up the green. And I'm not going to, I didn't bother to cut like special shapes. I just loosely covered it. I took my blending brush that already had my Berry Burst ink. So there's still, see, there's still some on here. I'm not re-inking. And I just lightly... toned down that white and now when you put it on top of here it doesn't scream white but it doesn't it's not as dark as the background either and I thought that was a good solution so that's just uh oh and I have another tip here, I need to put this right here so I don't forget to tell you. That's a solution that you can try if you don't like to trim all the way into every single little nook and cranny. You don't want to get out a exacto knife and you want it a little bit toned down. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Terry says, I love how your nail polish matches the color on your card. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. It does, doesn't it? This is just my favorite current color, and the funny thing is, is that for I have like, I don't know, 12 different colors of the same brand, and I just was alternating them. This is the only one that doesn't chip or lift or peel or whatever. This color, even though they're all the same brand, this color stays the best. So I just keep using this color, and I don't even know what it's called. I'd have to look at my jar, but yeah, but it does kind of match Berry Burst, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, anyway, you're not here for a manicure lesson. <laughs> let's let's carry on. <laughs> so now I want to show you a couple tips for layering. Then I have to show you the tip for this. Can't forget to show you this part. So when I put my pieces on here, I used my dimensionals. I guess I'm ready for a new sheet. I was looking for a sheet that already had some used. And you know, usually I love foam sheets, but for this particular stamp, because I am only going to lift up certain parts of it, I used dimensionals in some areas, and then I want other areas to be flatter because I'll show you why. So is that about, I want to kind of, kind of make it, well, that's close enough. Okay. Because I wanted to be able to pop up another piece. And I think I'm going to cut this apart right here. I wanted to be able to add another piece and pop this one up, but I didn't want double, like 
you know, a dimensional here and a dimensional here, and I didn't want it to get too thick. So by leaving out the dimensional under here, this is flat, then I can pop this one up and it will be kind of that double, it'll be layered but not double thickness. That's what my words are trying to say. So I can see that I want some of this white out of here. Right there. And you know, probably nobody else is going to worry about these layers of white and whatnot. I'm probably the only one, but but it matters to me, so therefore it matters to me. <laughs> okay, that was a really weird statement. <laughs> I hate picking dimensionals off a sheet. This is what I like to do better. Let's just pull them off with a pokey tool. So I keep an old pokey tool here that gets gunked up on the tip and I just don't care that it's gunky. All right, so let's put this piece going down here. And then I think I'll take this small one and kind of just tuck it Oh, I like that right there. So here's a tip. I like it right there. I don't want to move it because I don't want to forget its placement. I'm just going to sneak attack, as Kirsten says, a dimensional right underneath. So I'm just lifting up right where it was. And I'm just sneaking, sneaking it in place there to hold it down. And then I don't have to... Um, move it. There we go. So I kind of like that conglomeration of berries. Isn't it pretty? I like this. I really like this. All right. Now, final tip. I know you're probably thinking, my heavens, so many things today. <laughs> Where did the DSP come from? It's not DSP. It is a background stamp. So I went over tips for using this at the beginning. If you want to watch the replay later, this is a background stamp. I stamped it in Berry Burst on white cardstock to make the background. I stamped it again in black on white cardstock and colored it in. So if you would like all those details, you can uh, catch the replay. Thank you. I'm glad you like the colors. All right. So, okay, last tip. Do you see on this tag how it is a little bit of an ombre effect, the light pink into the darker pink? So here's what I did. The first thing I did was I die cut with bubble bath cardstock and I stamped it and I laid it on there and I thought, well, okay, it looks okay, but it was a little bit, I don't know, just kind of dull to me. So I thought that popped better. So I die cut it in white. I took my bubble bath um, blend. So starting with the light one. And I did some light. I turned it around and I did some dark. And then went over it with the light to kind of blend it in. And as that sits and softens and it, it comes to its truer color. See how this looks a little bit orangey, but trust me, when it dries and when it is completely blended into the paper, it will look just like this. This is bubble bath, I promise you. And you can even see the difference of this versus the caps. When you first color with some colors, they do not look like the finished product. When you let them dry and you let them sit, I promise you, they will turn into their truer color. So that's what I did. And then I stamped hello. And that is from, to me, this is a must-have set. It's called Layering Leaves. It is Rachel Tessman's Million Dollar Set. 
Can you even get over the beautifulness of all of those greetings? And then we have the bow punch that matches these images and this smaller little sprig. So you can punch those out as well as put these on just any die cut or any scrap that you have. But I love that. And that's where hello came from. And I just added that right on top with dimensionals. But I'm not going to stamp on this yet because I think it's better to let that ink completely dry before you stamp on it. I don't want the hello to bleed. So I'll leave this here. I'll finish it up. But those, my goodness, how many tips was that today? That was a lot. <laughs> anyway, those are all of your tips for the day and uh, blends tips. And I wanted to also tell you that on my YouTube channel, I have a series, I think there are over 25 videos now of Stampin' Blends tutorials completely free and they are for you to watch anytime. I will link to the playlist in tomorrow's blog post. Or if you're on my YouTube channel, Patty Stamps or Patty Bennett, you can find me there. When you click on playlists across the top, you'll see all of the playlists that I have for you. One of them is Stampin' Blends tutorials. So you can see all of those and you can learn to color all different types of images, all different ways, and all of my tips are there for you. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, Stacy. Oh, you're welcome, Lila. Thank you, everybody. Yes, it was a lot of tips today, Rose. That was a lot to take in. <laughs> Patty says, love the tips, especially buy more paper. So you know what? Speaking of the buy more paper, I know we're all guilty of this. We find something beautiful, especially like this shimmer paper. And uh, I forget who said it. Somebody said, you know, but there's only one sheet. So then what happens? What do you do? You don't use it because you only have one sheet. But that's not good, right? We need to use it up. You need to use your paper. So if it means buying a second pack so that you can hoard a pack and use a pack, then that's what I do. And then once I start cutting it and using it, then I'm like, okay, okay, I can use all my packs. And that's what I've been doing. And it really works because if I only have one, one sheet, I won't use it. It'll be like, oh, it's too pretty. I need to leave it. So it really is a true tip. <laughs> it really does work. <laughs> oh, good. Joy says the berry harvest stamp is less scary now. Yay. I'm so glad. Oh, Rosie, keep practicing. Keep um, watching the replays if you want to try to copy what I'm doing. I really think the key is being loose with this color. Treat it almost as a watercolor. Don't treat it as I have to, you know, color every single little teeny tiny little place and be very precise. Be loose with it and don't be afraid to try things. It's only paper and ink. You can toss it if you don't love it. You can set it aside overnight. You can come back to it. And I promise with time, you will be more confident and you'll try new things and you will begin to love the samples that you are making. Oh, good. Carol says she wants to color now. Yes, Louise, right. She's already noticing how this label is starting to dry and it's getting much closer to the true color. It's interesting, isn't it? And I think that often people who are coloring with our blends, if they see that initial, um, like, let me just grab a white scrap and let's put it next to there. So when you see that color first come out, and it looks so much more orange than the one that is already starting to dry. And I think what might happen is people might say, ew, ew, I, I don't want my project to look orange. I'm not going to use that color. But then as you let it dry, look at the difference. So give it a chance. Let it dry. 
swatch your colors maybe one night and the next morning come back to it and say, oh, yeah, 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 those look beautiful together, as opposed to, oh, dear, no, wait, wait, I, I need to pull out Flirty Flamingo because it's going to look better. But then once it dries, there's the difference. Isn't that interesting? So that's another thing not to be afraid of. You're welcome, Judy. I'm glad that you enjoy everything for free. I like providing free help to everybody. Uh, for one thing, if something goes awry or technology glitches, I don't have to worry about it because it's free. <laughs> if you paid for this content and something went awry, I would feel extra bad. But this way, I'm like, you know, it's free. It is what it is. I'm sharing from my heart, sharing what I love, and I'm glad that you enjoy it. <laughs> Yes, Joyce, the skin tones are deceiving at first, definitely. Oh, good. Shauna says she has learned so much today. Oh, and I am glad that you are enjoying that stamp. How long to leave it to dry, says Myra. So how long do you think? Was that maybe, maybe 10 minutes? And it's already pretty much, right? Didn't it? It's it's very close, right? So 10-ish minutes, I would say, before it really starts to soak in, the alcohol evaporates, the color soaks into the paper, it blends together. So yeah, maybe 10-ish minutes or so. I mean, I've never really timed it, but I'm guessing that was about what it was. So any other questions for me before I let you go? Thank you, Patty. Yes, 28 years of being a demonstrator this week. Can you believe that? Thank you, Christine. Fran, that's totally fine. You are welcome to watch the replay. It'll be up in a few minutes, and then it'll be on my blog tomorrow and on my YouTube channel later this afternoon. So any other questions, anything anybody has for me before I let you go? I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for letting me share coloring with you. This is my passion. This is what I love the most. And it's, um, I feel kind of selfish wanting to show you the coloring because I love it so much, but I hope that in turn you learned some things. <laughs> oh, thanks, Becky. Thank you, Eva. Thanks, Lila. Your blog name again. Yes, I'm happy to put that out here. So pattystamps.com. I've been blogging there about, I don't know, 15, 16 years, something like that. Um, I started it right after my mom passed away in 2006. So however many years that is. And I don't know if you've all heard this story. You're welcome to click off if you've already heard it. But the reason I started my blog was because when my mom was still alive, she would call me every single day at five o'clock. And she would say, how's your day? What you doing? What are you working on? Um, how's everything going? And it was just sort of that check in that knowing that she cared and she always wanted to know what I was up to. How was Jason doing? You know, all that. Well, when she passed away, that was such a huge void in my life. And I decided I would start a blog. Now, mind you, I had no idea what I was doing. None. <laughs> really, seriously, none. No idea. But I started a blog. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to post whatever I'm making that day. And I really don't care if anybody looks at it. I don't care if anybody comments. Back then, we had no online ordering. So nobody could even order anyway. But I just thought this is, was my way of kind of saying, Here's what I'm doing today. And that's why I started my blog. And through the years, it has morphed from different providers. I don't even remember what my first one was. And then I went to TypePad and now it's on WordPress, which means nothing to you other than to say it's much more functional now. It's uh, easier for me to use and to blog each day on it. And I love the features and everything that I can provide for you on there. But um, yeah, so there, sorry, that's a story you didn't ask for, but I just thought I would share because I know that not everybody knows that story and people are probably wondering about that little bit of history. Or maybe you weren't. Okay, maybe you weren't. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> well, there's some hearts, so thank you. <laughs> so I do hope that you all have a fabulous weekend coming up. Demonstrators are participating in a really fun 
um, event tomorrow for demonstrators only. It's called Creativity Now. They actually have my bundle right here that we're going to be using. It's called Translucent Florals. So demonstrators were able to order this early, and we are going to be stamping with this set, this bundle. And it will be in the holiday catalog, which comes out for customers in September. So if you love it and you start seeing samples, it will be available in the holiday catalog. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow morning is participating in that. And then I'm finishing up all of my projects for our upcoming crafting cruise in September. Woo, so many things I'm working on, but so much fun. <laughs> Yes, Louise is going to participate as well. It is a gorgeous stamp set. You're welcome, Susan. You're welcome, Patricia. Thank you, everybody. So um, have a fabulous weekend, and I will see you all here next Friday, which, oh my goodness, is the last day of June. Holy moly. I don't know what happened to June. It honestly feels like it was May about three days ago. But anyway, anyway, thank you all for spending your time with me. I truly appreciate you. And I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.